Hey, and welcome to this short introduction video on how to get started building visualizations in ClickSense. So before you get started, make sure that you have ClickSense Desktop installed on your computer. And once ClickSense Desktop is installed, make sure it's up and running. So once ClickSense is running, then you can go ahead and fire up a web browser of your choice. Uh, I'm using Chrome in this example. And then browse to a web address that will be localhost semicolon 4848 slash workbench. So workbench is a product that we ship together with ClickSense Desktop. Uh, and this is a product that sort of facilitates an, an easier getting started method to work with visualizations and mashups. So it's sort of an interactive editor that ships with a lot of template to sort of kickstart the process so you don't have to write as much boiler code as you needed to before. Uh, so once you hit the Workbench product, you will see that there's already some extensions here, and these are the extensions that I'm... I'm sorry, I will keep messing this up. Uh, previously, we would have referred to this as extensions, although we are trying to change the name into visualizations. So if you hear me referencing extensions, it will mean visualizations. So bear with me on that one. Uh, so you will see in the list here all the different visualizations that we have available, uh, as well as mashups that could have been installed before. Uh, and on your file system, these will be stored. So if you open up an Explorer window, you can browse to uh, My Documents folder. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So it's going to be My Documents folder, click, sense, and then extensions. And as you can see, the list over here sort of mimics the list we have over here. Um, so enough chatting. So let's start building a visualization. So what we can do then is we can hit the Create New button up here. We can name our visualization or extension, as it actually says in the product. Uh, we can call it a basic chart. And what's pretty exciting is that we have started shipping a lot of new templates. So we have, for example, the basic visualization template to choose from. We have some chart templates, list box, tables, and we also have different mashups. And as you might see in the list here, it's also very possible for developers to build their own templates and distribute among the community. So if you, for example, have a really good mashup, you can package that into a template and then sort of distribute that and let people reuse your code. But for this example, let's go with a chart template. So we create this. It will show up here in the list, basic chart. We can click that and then hit edit. So let's start editing our visualization. So the core parts of visualization is mainly just two files. It's going to be this one, basic chart.qext it's going to be a javascript file called basic chart.js and that's pretty much all you need to get up and running building your own visualizations that has the same core functionality as the basic charts clicksense ships with uh, so the qext file is essentially metadata around your visualization so it will have a name you can input a little bit of descriptions you can have different icons um, you can reuse the ones we have or ship your own we have a type that is visualization. You can include versions, preview icons, and we can also include a little bit of author information. So let's fill in the author information. Uh, that's going to be me. You can also have a description. And, uh, if I can spell description. And from here, we're pretty much done. So let's just save that file. And now we can navigate over to our JavaScript file and look at the magic. So this is going to look like a lot of code, but don't be intimidated up front because it's mostly boilerplate and you don't have to change too much. So ClickSense is using something called require.js. And what that is, it's basically a module loading system for JavaScript. So what we do is that we package up each and every visualizations into something called a module. So what we do here is that we define that module. We include any kind of dependencies, uh, libraries, images, CSS files that we might need to use in our visualization. So in this case, we're using uh, jQuery. So we pass in jQuery. And once this module is loaded, we're going to return something. And what this module returns is a few different 
core properties uh, that I will go over in more detail. There will be some initial properties. There will be a definition statement. We have a snapshot property, and we also have a paint method. And the paint method is the one that's going to be called and render what we see on the screen. But let's go over it from the top. So the initial properties in this version uh, defines once we drop it on the sheet, what should the properties be? And in this case, we define that we will have a hypercube definition. And the hypercube definition uh, governs what kind of data will go into the actual extension. And for this one, we do not predefine any dimensions or measures because we want the user to be able to drag their own dimensions and measures in here. Uh, but if you, for example, would have an extremely complex set analysis statement, we could predefine that as a measure for the initial properties. We also define what the initial data fetch should be. Uh, and all the data that comes from ClickSense is converted into a sort of, uh, if you would think of a straight table, that's sort of how it would be presented to uh, the API. So it will have a width of two columns, and in this case, we define a height of 50, which means that we will have two columns and 50 rows of data coming into our extension. So that's pretty much it for the initial properties for now. Uh, so we move on to the next section, which will be the uh, definition statement. And the definition statement controls how the property panel will look like in ClickSense. Uh, and this is where you usually could add your dimensions, you can have your dim your expressions or measures, uh, you can define sort orders, what kind of settings should we use. Uh, and we have gone through a lot of effort to make sure that a lot of the stuff that clicks, clicks and ships with out of the box, that, that those components should be able to be reusable by developers. So in this case, we define a type that is going to be items. Uh, we tell it it's going to be an accordion menu. That's going to be the standard way of looking at properties in ClickSense. Uh, and the items should be dimensions. Uh, and we can reuse the dimension statement here. So it uses dimensions. So it's going to pull in the standard component of dimensions from ClickSense. We can let the visualization know exactly how many dimensions we want the users to be able to drop in here. So in this case, it's going to be a minimum of one dimension and a maximum of one. And the same goes for measures. We reuse the existing component of measures. It's going to be a minimum of one and maximum of one. So we can't drop in more than one measure in this case. This is very useful if you, for example, have a scatter plot which needs two measures to render um, properly. So then a scatter plot would have a minimum value of two measures and a maximum of maybe three or four, depending on what the last measures will do. We can also tell ClickSense to use the sorting out of the box, and the same goes for the settings. So we don't really need to do too much here. We can leave it as is for now. We can go down a little bit more, and you will see the uh, snapshot settings. So in this case, we might want to allow people to take snapshots of our own visualizations to be included into, for example, storytelling mode. So uh, in this case, we can leave it at true. If we wanted to disallow snapshots, we could turn that into false. And as you can see, we actually do get complete syntax highlighting and autocomplete in this environment. But let's uh, go back to true for this one. And then we come down to the magical paint function. So when you drop the visualizations onto a sheet for the first time, or when you make any kinds of selections with the application, this paint function will fire. So it will, what it will do in this case, it will pass in two arguments to the function, which is going to be the element, which is a sort of like a jQuery reference to the DOM node that, we're, that we are working on within the page. And we also have the layout. And the layout contains all of the metadata as well as the data that is available to the extension or the visualization, sorry. <laughs> so uh, in this case, we do have a little bit of rendering code going on here. Uh, we cache the, uh, the JavaScript variable of this to self. We set up our initial HTML, which is going to be a div tag over here. We look at the different dimensions, which will be a sub-property of the layout, the hypercube, and then we have a little bit of dimension information. Uh, we also give it a variable of matrix, and this is the data matrix that I was talking about before. 
So think of this as a straight table. And it comes in as hypercube again uh, with the data pages, and this will be an array, and we take the first array and look at the matrix of data. Uh, and for this visualization, we have a little bit of conditional statements looking at if we do have uh, dimensions and if the length is longer than one, meaning we actually have uh, dimensions to our visualizations, what we will do is we will grab that data matrix and for each row in that matrix or straight table of data, we will loop over each row and for each row we will append to our core element or our DOM node a div one or a div, sorry, a div element which has uh, some special properties here, which, will, which I will go over, but it will also have the, uh, the first column of our row, meaning our dimension, as text, and it will also have the measure. So in this case, it will loop over all of the data and will sort of print out a similar sort of table of data. Once the loop is complete, we close off the, uh, the div node or the DOM node, and then we inject to our jQuery wrapper, we inject that uh, HTML string or DOM node straight into there. So once all of this HTML node has been injected into the, uh, the actual DOM, we can now start looking at making the visualization selectable. And we gone through a lot of effort to make sure that developers can reuse the normal selection model that we have in ClickSense without having to write a lot of complex code to get it up and running. So as you can see on the actual rows that we inserted, we do have a class that says selectable, which is important. Uh, and we also include a HTML5 data value that corresponds to the element number of each row. And once we have these two components in here, this block becomes very interesting because what we are doing here in short is that we're looking for all the different kinds of nodes within our visualization which has a class of selectable and once we find those nodes we will make sure that when an event called QV activate fires we will look at the data value we will parse that data value make sure that it's probably parsed so we can use it and then we call something called select values and select values is part of the uh, ClickSense API. Uh, and what this does is that we can tell it to select the dimension, pass in a array of values, in this case, a single value. And we can sort of say that commit this, commit this selection. And that's about it actually. And from this, we can also toggle a class that says selected. So we, uh, make sure that we have all of the nice features going on in there. Uh, all in all, this is a very short extension, a very rudimentary one. Uh, there's a lot more you can do, but uh, it's roughly 70 lines of code to get something up and running, which is super, super simple. So let's save all of this. And let's go back to ClickSense and see how this looks. So here we have ClickSense. Let's create a new app from scratch. Let's call it Basic Shard. We open that app and to be able to use a visualization, we need some data. So open the data load editor. And in this case, I'm just going to go with dummy data. So what you, this is a little hidden feature, but if you uh, press and hold the control button on your PC and then in, hit the uh, the zero key twice, it will actually insert a load statement which will generate a lot of dummy data for you. This is similar to the uh, test script that we had in ClickView 11. So if you worked with uh, ClickView before, you will recognize this. So we can load this data. There we go. And from here, now when we have some data in our application, let's go ahead and create a sheet and drag our visualization in there. So let's go with the uh, all the default names. Let's put the app into edit mode. And as you can see here, we have our basic chart. So this is the chart we just created. So if we click on it, you will see that we have the little preview icon 
this will be a description, which was the description we named for the actual uh, visualization. And as you see in the list, we do not make any sort of assumptions between the different components that ships with the product out of the box or what third-party developers develop. We give an equal amount of weight to it. So you can see that we have our basic chart here. We have a few other extensions, which uh, I have been using from partners or that I built on my own or that some other customer in, within the community has built. So for example, the uh, circuit packing one or the uh, Delta with extension. But let's get back to the basic chart. So what we can do is we can drag this onto the sheet, drop it in here. And as you can see, it behaves exactly like a standard out of the box visualization that ships with the product. So we get the same functionality of adding a dimension. So let's add a dimension, then one, we can add a measure. In this case, we can say some expression one and it rendered very, very fast. And if we go through the properties, you can see that we reuse the dimensions that came with the product, very handy. So in this case, we can actually expand this and, and turn off null values, for example. We can reuse the measures component, we can reuse the sorting components, and a lot of the different appearances in terms of uh, titles and subtitles and footnotes and so on and so forth. So uh, do you remember that little loop where I talked about making the actual extension selectable? So of course, we can now click on the different items in the list. And as you can see, the entire extension uh, enters into selection mode. And you can see up in the current selections bar where the different values are selected within the app. And it's very, very fast. We don't have to do too much uh, since we're reusing all of the existing ClickSense components. So we can commit extent where we can commit selections, we can clear and so on and so forth. Uh, so if this has been interesting, I would highly recommend that you read up on the documentation, which you will find on help.click.com. And if you go down on this page, you will find the normal product help file, but you will also find the developer help, help site. And this is a great help site. So I really, really, really recommend that you go and have a look at it. Not only does it have great documentation on all our APIs, but it's also packed with lots of good examples, code samples, so on and so forth. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, and if you do build something that you're very proud of, or you need some help with or something else, I do also recommend that you visit branch Dot click dot com, which is our web developer community for for Click, where you're able to share projects, find already existing projects in a very open source manner. So head over there, sign up, and have a good time. So I hope you found this video uh, informational. Um, and if you did, do please leave a comment on the blog if this is something you want to see more of. Instead of a short blog post, we would be well, very willing to do more in-depth screencasts on development for ClickSense. So, Alex signing out. Have a good one.